long, long way from the finish. The bell, though, will now ring. It's Lendl who's there. It's Quintero at the front. La Vresen's making his move. Richardson goes wherever he goes. Quintero still there, but they're gaining. The stars are on him. Quintero in front, but here comes La Vresen. And Harry La Vresen bouncing back, arriving in Mallorca and grabbing back the lead leader's jersey. This is Xie of Chinese Taipei. He's gone for his tactic. Nondarno is gambling the other way around. He's waiting on the wheel of Labrador and making the world champ do all the work to close this up. The bell's wrong, and Xie's still out there. But is he tiring? Oh, yes, he is, because look at the pace. Here's the man in the rainbow jersey. That's where he's wearing it. He wins by a country mile. And Harry Lavresen makes very short work of his opponents and moves into tonight's second of two semi-finals. One lap to go, and the Romain still has that gap. Are we about to see a big shot? Look at the acceleration, though. They're flying towards him. They zip around him. Turn three, turn four. It's Lavresen, Lavresen, and Lavresen going all the way to the final. Harry Lavresen won. Matthew Richardson nil. It's not easy, given the fact it is one-on-one, -on -one, as Joe was saying. He can't hide and hope he's looking at the other rider here. Lavresen's focus is fully on the Frenchman. It is De Reich who's going to lead it out, but we know that Lavresen doesn't dislike this. If he can get in the slipstream here, put in the power, he will still be favourite. But it's the Frenchman who takes that bell lap. He goes through the 200-metre line as well, but here comes the flying Dutchman, Harry Lavresen, sailing past the competition, and the world champion, looking every little bit like it as he takes his first 20-point haul of this year's UCI Track Champions League. 17 watts to beat Sonderreich and take the early lead in the Champions League. The leader of the men's sprint competition from the Netherlands, Harry Lovrason. Harry, the perfect start for you. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't wish for more. It was uh, really well, and I was really happy at yeah, with how every sprint went, actually. Yeah. How do you come into these, uh, this league uh, mentally? After a World Championships, this is Olympic year. Yeah. Some of the riders have chosen not to come here and focus on the preparations. What is your thinking coming into to this Track Champions League? Uh, actually, it is already my third season doing the league, and uh, I, really, I really like to race. That's first of all, so uh, I, I like to do these races. And, uh, I really had a long run up to the, till the World Championship. It was like four months of only training. So uh, actually I was really happy I could have some more races now. And I think uh, yeah, these races are really good for, uh, for next year Olympics. Like yeah, yeah. feeling the, yeah, trying the tactics, but yeah, feeling, yeah, feeling the sprint leads, it's, uh, I think it's really good. It, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked as though you're riding with more confidence. Um, not that you don't ride with confidence normally, <laughs> no, no. but it seemed like there was, there was less pressure on your shoulders tonight. The sprint was relatively straightforward, but the Kieran, I thought you dealt with the, you know, the threat of yeah. the Colombian Quintero world champion, who had only ridden one sprint round, had relatively fresh legs. Yeah, but yeah. You, you took that race on and you made it your own. Uh, yeah, I felt pretty confident going in the in the Kieran. I, I was actually I was pretty tired after the first four sprints uh, or the three sprints in the Kieran, mm -hmm. but then we had uh, I think an hour rest before the final, so I also felt fresh again, a bit fresh. Uh, so actually, yeah, I went in, and uh, I think I think my positioning was really well. Like went there in front of me, Richo in the in the in the back. I couldn't, yeah, I could wait really long. So I was actually, uh, I just made a plan and I did it and worked out. So yeah, love that. Williams is now going to come around. Archibald into third place. Does she have enough room to go? She can if she can have the legs on the back, and it is Coles Leister who's going to be made to pay for that acceleration. And three now remain. Stenberg, Williams, Archibald. The lead on the night in the league yeah. is between Williams and Archibald. Yeah, Archibald finishing second in that scratch race behind Lily Williams. Stenberg riding really well here to be up in this elimination race. Another very consistent rider to watch out for. Remember, Lily Williams taking 20 points in that first event of the night. Are we going to see the league leader coming to the fore here? Yes, we are. Because Archibald is going to survive, Williams is going to be out. 
And it's a great opportunity now for Katie Archibald, if she can bring this one home, to take a race win and the league lead. But she's up against Anita Stenberg. Now the bell rings. Archibald waits, tries to move, can move, takes the position on the front. Here goes the gap. It's opening up. And this is a foregone conclusion now. Katie Archibald able to celebrate, riding in her first race win of this 2023 Champions League. And you're looking at your first Champions League leader. Race win and the jersey. What a start to the 2023 edition for the British star. The, the boost that you get from your confidence when something comes off and to be here with my teammates and we debrief afterwards and say, did you see this? Did you see that? And then when I, you know, it, there's a, a real satisfaction to that. And yeah, I, I hope to get that feeling every weekend. <laughs>